to support the war in Ukraine and not to use doping. Such conditions for participation in the 2024 Olympics were set by the International Olympic Committee for athletes from Russia and Belarus. In the statement released on January the 25th, it is said that no athlete should allegedly be deprived of the opportunity to participate in competitions only because of one's passport. Only athletes who fully respect the Olympic Charter would participate. This means in particular, first, only those who have not acted against the peace mission of the IOC by actively supporting the war in Ukraine could compete. Second, only athletes who fully comply with the World Anti-Doping Code and all relevant anti-doping rules and regulations would be eligible. From a statement by the International Olympic Committee on the IOC website. The organization also confirmed that all other sanctions remained in place. Thus, Russian and Belarusian officials are not invited or accredited to international competitions and meetings. National flags, anthems and other elements of country identification remain banned. Therefore, in case of admission, Russian and Belarusian athletes will compete under a neutral flag. However, there can be no question of any neutrality after 11 months of a full-scale war. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky said it in response to the statement, and any neutral flag of Russian athletes is stained with the blood of Ukrainians. It is impossible not to be disappointed by the statements of the current head of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach. I spoke to him several times and never heard how he was going to protect sports from war propaganda if he returned Russian athletes to international competitions. There is no neutrality when a such a war is going on, and we know how often tyrannies try to use sport for their own ideological interests. The Ukrainian leader also invited Thomas Bach to Bakhmut, a city in the Donetsk region that the Russian army has been unsuccessfully trying to capture for months. This is how the city stadium looks like after one of the bombings. And this is Chernihiv. The local sports complex was bombed by the Russian army in April, and the central stadium of Mykolaiv two months later. In total, the Russians have destroyed at least 320 sports facilities in Ukraine and killed more than 200 athletes and coaches. The Minister of Youth and Sports, Vadim Hutsayt, said. Meanwhile, the International Olympic Committee called the reaction of the Ukrainian leadership slanderous statements and did not abandon the idea of allowing Russians and Belarusians to the Olympics. A number of countries condemned this position of the IOC. Some declared their readiness to boycott the Summer Games in 2024. In addition to Ukraine, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Norway, Great Britain, Germany and Poland spoke out against the participation of Russian and Belarusian athletes. Such a scenario, an ultimatum to the IOC, is quite real. There must be an effective coalition of countries without which the organization of the Games would not have been possible. We are taking a number of measures in the international arena. We are talking about the sports ministers of 40 countries who signed appeals in order to create some pressure on the leadership of the International Olympic Committee. Kamil Bortnichuk, Minister of Sports and Tourism of Poland. Ukraine also plans to boycott the Paris Olympics if the IOC still allows Russia and Belarus to participate. The decision will be made by the Ukrainian National Olympic Committee at the Extraordinary General Assembly on February the 3rd. Reported by Dana Kolesnik, Valeria Nikopolova, UATV News.